If you have ever thought from going from sample user to sample creator, producercourses.com forward slash sample class is the course that you need. We're talking about how to create samples from one loop, how to make your VST setup sound like an analog desk, how to use guitar pedals in your DAW. I'm talking about how to create your own covers, how to create your own scores. We hold your hand through the entire process from chord to composition to cash sample class. What's up everybody? It's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and ProducerCourses.com. Don't forget to stop by ProducerCourses.com. Pick up your premium membership. It's 50 cents a day. Also, please don't forget to stop by CMP Kits. We are running a 30% off sale throughout the month of February. CMPKits.com. Now, today I want to show you guys some workflow hacks inside of the MPC software. Um, it could be intimidating. It could be a little weird. So let's take a look at it. Now, when you first go into your MPC software, you're going to see this screen right here. The way that I like to have my MPC software set up is I want to click these buttons down here. I want to see the Q links. I want to see pad perform. I want to see as much information as I possibly can. And I also want to see the pads, right? I want to be able to start auditioning loops inside the MPC software and be able to switch the tempo of my project or switch the pitch of the loop but not alter the length of them. First thing that you want to do is you just want to go ahead and you want to go to MPC, go to preferences, go down to general, right? And in this audio and warp section, no matter what computer you have, you have enough CPU power to use Elastic Pro. This is the industry standard pitch shifting algorithm that's going to sound the best. Once you have that set up, the next one that you want to go into is like, what's the best way to use loops? So you want to stay away from loading them as samples on the pads. You want to go to this section here, right? You're using audio loops. This is how you can remember it. Using audio loops, go to audio tracks. We're not writing MIDI parts. We're using audio tracks. So you could go ahead and go through your loops and just kind of listen. All right, so say I, I wanted to use this one, right? My track is at 140. And I go ahead and I drag this on to the audio track, right? So we're going to notice something here. You see how this loop is longer than the loop? What you want to do to be able to have this conform to your session is you want to hold down command and then go in this lower right hand corner you'll see that arrow going this way and that way this is a time stretch tool right so you could change this to be like a hat you know a, a double time loop you could drag it out and make it conform now at 140 we have the um, speed that we need all right and it's looping perfectly a couple other things that you want to look at here, you can half speed it with this command here. I'm sorry, double time it, or you could half speed it with this guy here. Now, what you want to make sure you do is you have this warp button checked on. If you don't have the warp button checked on, none of what I showed you, you know, is going to apply, right? And that's going to allow us to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do like a slow trap song today. Let's kick it up to 180. You know, maybe I want to do like a Detroit type of vibe, right? So now our sample sounds like this. So the next thing that's that can be, you know, kind of difficult when you're first starting out is, you know, how do I how do I go about setting up my 808, having them cut itself? And it's not really difficult at all. So we go back to MIDI, we go to our first track. By default, your first track is going to be set to a drum program, right? Because that's what MPC wants to do. It wants to program drums. But all you got to do is up here, these are your track types. What you're going to use is a key group, right? Key group is what you use to play one shots across the keys, right? It's a key group. So we can go ahead now and hit our browser and find the 808 that we want to use. I'm going to use that one right there. Perfect. Um, but where do we put it? I don't I, like do, do I do I drag it over here? You know, where does this go? All right. So. You got to understand the MPC language, right? Key group is a program, right? So if you want to make changes to a program, you need to go to the program editor. Where do you find that? So 
your navigation inside of MPC is going to be these buttons right here, right? So you got your program edit, your sample edit, your pad mixer, channel mixer, your sampler, your looper, your track mute. And if you look here, there's even more. <clears throat> you got next sequence, you got song mode for arranging. So what I wanna do is I wanna edit my program, right? And I'm gonna drag this guy down here. So now I've got this um, sample here, right? You can have up to four layers of samples in the key group. What you wanna do is your polyphony on on this master section and on the key group section, they're going to be set to poly. That's going to be bad because when you play your 808s, they're not gonna cut themselves off. They'll play over each other like chords. So for 808s, you wanna click this, press mono, where this says key group poly, you wanna click that, press mono. And then what I like to do is I like to use these as one shots, right? It comes stock as node on, which means you have to hold down the key. One shot, it just plays when you trigger it. Once you have that set up, you can go back to home. Let's go back to our audio track. We This is in D minor. So if I wanna use my pad controller, not have to worry about keeping my 808 in key, all I have to do is I have to go to pad perform, go to notes, natural minor is the scale that we're working in, and then change my root note to D. You know, once I have that, I'm I'm ready to play. So I could say, boom, I have my 808 set up. Now I want to go ahead and look at my drums, right? So I'm going to go to a new track. All I do is I go through my folders, find a sound I like, and you just drag and drop it onto the pads. And it'll pop up here. So now I can go ahead and program a little piece, drop it out. So now I got this going on. So now I can go back to my 808 pattern, and if I have my pad controller, I can just go ahead and play along to that. I've got my 808 pattern down. I like it. I'm listening to my drums, and I'm thinking, you know what? I might want to tune some of these drums right now. I know my key is in D minor. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click down here where this says MIDI keyboard, and I'm going to use this as a reference, right? So if I go back to track two where my drums are i just want to double click it select my kick over here this button is for sample edit we go to sample edit S since the latest update akai has added key detection for one shot samples you know samples like songs and loops and stuff like that right so it's telling me that the key of this um kick is in f if i look at a d chord right which is the scale of my track i know that i'm using this note here which is d and then I'm using this note here, which is F, right? So this is already in key. If I listen to it, it doesn't sound weird. And that's the point. It doesn't sound weird. So I don't see any reason to, you know, mess with this one. You don't, tuning your drums isn't about, you know, putting everything in the root note of the track, right? You just want to make sure that sounds good and it's in harmony. For this workflow, I could click back and say double click here, go back to the sample edit, and I see that this snare is set to F sharp, right? All I did was tune it down one. Not, again, not trying to find the root note, just get it to be in the vibe. This is what it sounded like without the tuning. Doesn't sound awful, but you can't tell me that just with this little change, and that's the thing, a whole bunch of little changes over the course of the beat is how you get that pro sound, right? So that's the keys for tuning your drums. If you're like me, sometimes you might be like, you might start with a sample from another song. You just, you just want to switch out the loop. So what you can do is just go back to audio, right? And say, okay, you know what? I don't want to use this anymore. I'm not vibing with it. Let's go back to this loop folder. All right, so say I have this one right here. This is in G minor. You know, the key is off. It's at a weird bar length. You want to be careful when you do this. When you're switching out loops that are different tempos, first take the warp off. If you know what the tempo is, like we do at CMP Kids, we give you guys the tempo. You want to go ahead and just switch back just for a second to see something. So this is telling me this is a 16 bar loop. I can go back, change this, want to hit command, and then drag that back to be a 16 bar loop. Now we are in time. Right? That's all you had to do. So let's listen. 
Now, G, that's not the scale of the track that we're working in, right? It's going to sound weird with the bass and the drums. So let's look where G is on the keyboard. G is right here. What is the easiest way to get to D? Let's see if we... This loop sounds kind of low, so I want to pitch it up, right? So how far do I have to go up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So let me go ahead and where you see this, where this says semi, that's where you do your tuning. Notice how it didn't change the speed. Let's listen. And that's the fast, easy way to just audition loops. So you can see like once you have you know, just the basic parameters, making stuff like Detroit style music, making trap inside, inside the NPC, super easy, super simple. Um, let me just give you a last bonus to take advantage of the NPC, right? Because the reason why you got this was to, you know, just enhance your drums. So if we go back to the main and we go click on MIDI, if we want to add a little bit of swing to our drums, right? You just want to go ahead and use the key command, command shift T, right? That's going to bring up the timing correct. And this is how you can add a little bit of swing. So I'm going to select eighth notes because my pattern is in eighth notes. I'm going to make sure the events are the selected ones. I have a swing of 53 here. And let me just click do it. See how that shifted those over? Now for my hi-hats, I can take these and do the same thing. Select them, command shift T. And I don't want to have that same swing, but what I do want to do is I want to shift the timing a little bit. We'll just pull them a little bit behind the beat. I'm just going to go with one right here, right? Now let's listen. Yeah, super easy workflow. The software, very powerful. You guys keep it simple. Don't be basic. Stop by CMP kits, 30% off through February. We'll see you on the next one.